Wake up, fog on my brain, life is feeling empty. Fall out of bed, get myself dressed, grab a cup of coffee. Hello. Hi, is that Natalie? Hi, yes it is. Oh, hi, it's Howard Foster here from Camden Town Radio. Hey, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank good. You. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, I'm so happy to join you. Well, nice to meet you, Natalie, and I believe you're a singer-songwriter who has influences from Amy Winehouse to Lady Gaga, amongst others. That is correct. On stage, is it yourself and a guitar, or what's the stage set up? No, so it's me as a singer, and then I have a band and BBs, but I write basically to chords, so that's how I structure it, but on stage it's a big band. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. So what's your usual setup? Is it sort of guitar, drums, bass, or what kind of...? So it'll be me, I'll have two backing vocalists, I'll have a drummer, bass, guitarist, um, sometimes a sax, and, uh, yeah. So basically I have usually about a seven-piece. All right. Oh, so quite a, yeah. big, quite a big sound then, yes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yes. Now, would you describe yourself as electropop? Have you heard my Start a Fire track? Oh, yes. So that's very electro-pop. Um, I'd say I've got influence from kind of the Gaga sound when yeah. it first started out, um, pushing it just to a bit more um, pop solely. All right. Um, but, yeah, no, so I'd say Start a Fire, my fourth track on my EP, is definitely very electro-pop. Yes. And in terms of the seven-piece band and, and big sound, do you have a jazz influence as well? Yeah, I do. So, literally from a little girl, um, I'm obsessed with Ella Fitzgerald, but my grandpa used to play her, literally like, drive me round my grandparents' house. So I kind of grew up on Ella Fitzgerald. Um, I did have kind of like Aretha Franklin. Um, those were kind of the vibes when I was growing up. Yeah. And I just love singing... Um, old school soul music so I wanted to kind of bring it into kind of what I love writing which is more the pop way but bringing like my soul roots in. I see yes so a variety of influences. Do you know it's just actually life experience. Yeah. So everything through the years from I guess going from say maybe 14 years old to now um you know sometimes talking about relationships for example sometimes if you experience pain or you experience true love sometimes 10 years later it's kind of easier to write about it yeah so i think more like my life experience has uh, influenced it or people i've met or sometimes i'll just be chilling on a train and i'll see a really cool phrase and I'll put it in my notes and then when i'm in the studio and i want to write about something and this is all flowing out i'll sometimes go to that phrase yeah, it's really fun. So it's more just like life experiences and maybe seeing like different um, phrases everywhere. Yes, that makes sense. So songwriting for you is, is quite an organic process then, rather than go in a studio specifically for a writing session. You like to write when you're out and about. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I can literally be anywhere and I'll suddenly be like, if, even if I'm out with a friend and I'll just suddenly get on my phone if I have an idea. Yes. Sometimes it'll be so embarrassing. I'll be out with mates just like, <laughs> you know, for dinner at a bar and I'll just literally record into my phone and people look at me as if I'm weird, but I try and make it out as if I'm doing like a voice note. Do you know what I mean? Oh, right. so, but yeah, so that's, I think it can be anywhere. I can wake up sometimes even at night. It'll be like 2 a.m. And I'm like, oh, I have to put it down because otherwise you actually don't remember it. You think in the morning, oh, no. Yeah. I remember what I thought of. But yeah, no, it's... You have to do it in the moment, because otherwise you do forget. <laughs> no, it's a good way to do it. So you actually would sing phrases into your phone? Yeah, so, for example, with my track, uh, Start a Fire, yeah. um, there's a re repetition of, this is how you start, this is how you start a fire, and I put it into my phone, and that's how actually the track started. Oh, right. So it literally came from that, and the idea just kind of flows, and then once you're kind of in it, then you go into the studio, and you're like, oh, I hear it, this is how it is. Yes. Yeah, so really, it's, um, it is quite an organic process. Yes, that's really interesting, yes, yes. Now, you mentioned the studio there. Are you somebody who is as happy in the studio as on stage, or what's the split for you? Do you know what? Studio and stage are actually completely opposite things, because yes. 
in a studio, it's the process of growing something. So you're not necessarily... It's more, in a strange way, like a therapy, but not in a in a very good way. So you yeah. release things, you find out things about your voice, and you work with incredible talent. Like, the guys I work with on my EP, I was, like, so lucky to work with, you know, incredible musicians, producers, mixers. So in the studio, it's fun, because it's, this is when you're developing, like, what you're trying to do. Yeah. And being on stage is... That's just, like, the best feeling in the world. For me, that's where I'm 100% myself. Um, I don't want to sound, you know, like, cheesy, but it's yeah. true. When I'm on stage, yeah. I'd say that's where the true nasty is, and I, I escape and I go somewhere else. And um, being able to release things that you have to say and people to be like, oh, I, you know, they come up to you and I'll be like, I really like this song because of this reason or I really connect to it because I know how you feel. Or, yeah. It's really cool and it's really humbling because I think a lot of people go through you know, ups and downs, and it's it's really lovely just to be able to, like, release it. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people feel alone about certain uh, subjects, but the truth is everyone's going through that, or they've been through that, or the heartbreak, or yeah. the love-hate relationship with someone. So, yeah, stage and studio, they are different, but in the same way, because you're being creative, they're kind of the same. Yes, no, that makes sense. Well, it's, it's good to hear that you are comfortable on stage, because... Not everybody is a natural stage performer, and I know some artists we talk to do prefer to be in the studio, which you know, which is fine. I mean, different things suit different people, but uh, no, it's nice to hear that you do really enjoy the stage experience. Yeah, I love it. Yes. <laughs> All right, that's great. Now, just to go back a bit, do you want to give us a brief history of how you started out as an artist? Yeah, cool. So, growing up, um, I was... I basically trained at theatre schools and I did the whole kind of like musical theatre route. Yeah. Um, and then I was really lucky enough to go to Sylvia Young years ago. And um, when I went to Sylvia's, that's how I got into writing actually because I started to audition for record labels and I was in girl groups. Oh, right. Up to the kind of the age of 16. Yeah. And then I was in duos, um, writing. And from really about 14, I started to write. So I'd always performed, and I loved singing. Yeah. And from 14 was when it kind of really started, when I started to write. And then my career kind of took me more showbiz kind of way, and I did a few TV things and commercials and shows, which I absolutely love. But when yeah. you're doing, um, for example, learning scripts and you're auditioning, your whole brain kind of goes into that for the whole auditioning process. Yeah. So, for example, writing would get left there wasn't time or I'd be home at 11 and then I'd have to wake up for then I have to go to rehearsals so as I got to kind of basically when I turned like 24 I made the decision I really want to do this yes myself artist route and I'm going to for now just say just leave the musical theater world and do my passion which is writing and uh, obviously singing my stuff, which I really, really adore. So that's how kind of how I kind of got into it, kind of from stage school, really, um, and um, having like really cool opportunities. And I really loved it. And it's where you can be truly authentic and 100% yourself. And you don't have to stand on the dot in the middle of the stage. If you feel like you want to sit down and you want to sing to someone or you feel you want to vibe with a guitarist, you can, because you don't have to stand in that spot and move on that line or... You know. Yes. So, yeah, that's kind of from the age of about fourteen, really. I started to get into it. I see. Yes. Now, what was it actually like at the Sylvia Young Theatre School? Sylvia's was so awesome. Like, honestly, I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to go there because yeah. it really framed me as a person and who I am today. Because it shows you independence. The, the teachers are incredible. I mean, just as well as vocational, so performing even academic, if you yeah. were going off to auditions, you'd still have to do your homework. And everyone oh. got amazing grades at GCSEs. Literally, I don't know how I got my grades, but <laughs> I did because the teachers were just so freaking awesome. And they made it fun. Yeah. Um, it was hard and it was scary that like, you'd be put in the spot and there was a lot of pressures and, um, you know, you're, you're kind of in a world in which, to be honest, it was really fun. Like, looking back, it, it, it was an incredible school. And yeah. Sylvia herself was just an amazing woman, and the people and all the peers I work with, like, all really cool. Rita's an awesome girl, extremely talented, and, you know, it's cool. There were so many, many talented people, and 
you know, I feel really lucky I got to go there and it was a really awesome experience and definitely made me into the person I am today. Yes, were you there at the same time as Rita? Yeah, she was in the year above me. Oh, that's okay. School, actually. Yeah, uh, really cool girl, uh, incredible voice. And, um, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. She deserves all her success and she's awesome. So that's what stage school does. Yes, well, so. hopefully you'll be able to follow in her footsteps. Okay. Yeah, man. Like, it would be really cool, yeah. Yes. All right, that's great. Well, it sounds like you've got some good experience after the stage school. So do you want to, again, I guess, take us along the timeline? So after, I mean, I guess you would have you would have been through a lot of experience of performing whilst at the school, but after you left, what sort of experience then sort of got you to where you are today? So... Yeah, so I basically did loads of, so at Sylvia, so you finish at 16, so I did a lot of um, cabarets with them, which would take you everywhere, and you'd be singing jazz to pop to soul, and we performed, for example, for the cast of Holby City, so you perform at big galas, Um, and after that, I, I performed in America and around the East West or uh, Caribbean, I did Europe, and I then did a cruise ship for my month as a lead vocalist, and I got to have my own show, so I started to use in-ears, uh, which a lot of performers use today, and I got to basically design my whole show, sing whatever I wanted, okay. and from that moment, I knew, I was like, wow, I'm really loving this, this is my own live band, I had my in-ears, and it was the, for me at first, I was like, oh my God, you can use in-ears, because coming from shows, you know, they have wedges and it's an orchestra, so it's a very yeah. different experience. Live gigging is very different. Oh, yeah. And um, then I started to do kind of like functions. So I'd sing for corporate galas. So I do big charity events. I, I've just come back, for example, this weekend from Dubai. So every weekend for me to like earn money for my life and support my music, I do function gigging, which is awesome because you get to travel the world, you get paid, and you get to sing for people, which yeah. is awesome. Um, and then... Yeah, so I've done a lot of performing around the world and touring in America and just always been on a stage and you learn every time. It's really interesting. Performing experience is so important, even if it's you can be performing in a pub or yeah. you can be performing in front of 3,000 people or you can be performing for 10 in like a really small, beautiful uh, bar and with a grand piano. So it's all different vibes and it's just mainly as long as you're there for the audience and, you know, making them feel or smile or making them escape their lives for that one hour they are or not. So, yeah, I've kind of been performing all over the place. <laughs> yes, well, it sounds like the theatre school prepared you very well for a life of performing. You know, you learn a lot from teachers. Really, it's down to all the teachers who yes. really help because they guide you in their expertise and what they're teaching you and how you can deal with things and how you can cope with certain aspects of performing um because it does look very glamorous like you know it's incredible to perform for example in dubai and you're performing yeah. for the president of kazakhstan for example which i have done which is amazing yeah. it, it looks glamorous but you still have to do the trip you yes. still wait around you know it's the yeah. glamorous moment is you singing on stage in that moment That's you right. know what i mean <laughs> yeah there's still hard work to but, be done to get there <laughs> yeah it's, yes. it's um people are like oh it's such an easy thing and it's it's actually not when you kind of break it all down yes. but the moment when you're on stage is incredible but the, the before and after people don't realize that you maybe have an hour of sleep or right. you know <laughs> it's the behind the know, scenes behind the scenes things that people don't see all the hard work that goes into yeah the it's not an overnight <laughs> thing it's that sometimes it's years of you know training or working at your craft or That's right. you know always going back to a vocal coach or just always keeping yourself at the best you can be or trying to get better and learn and learn from people yes that's right yes well that's that's a very interesting background uh that you've had to get to where you are today and i believe i believe that your debut single was released on the first of april is that right yeah it was liar yeah all right that's great and it says here that it's a a pop music ballad uh electro Um, electro pop based yeah 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 so Liar is actually, it's more, it's not a ballad, it's more upbeat, more okay. fun, yeah. more bouncy, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a really fun track, I really enjoyed that track. The third track on my EP, it kind of has the more ballad. Oh, right, okay. Um, 
that's more of a ballad ah. out of all my tracks. Actually, it's the only ballad in my EP. <laughs> oh, I actually had an EP that came out and that was the first single on it. Yes, the live was the ah, first okay, single, well, yes. Yes, oh, that's great. And you're, you have a, a new track out quite recently, is that right? Yes, so my second single was Am I Being Honest? Yes. And, um, yeah, so Am I Being Honest was out and then my EP came out on the 24th of May, so all oh, my four tracks are up now on Spotify okay. and everywhere. All right, that's great. Now, in terms of obtaining the EP and finding out yes. about your music in general, what, what are the best sites for people to, to head to? So, on social media, Instagram's a really good one because I'm always posting stories about what's going on. Yeah. Um, so, that's at MTG Music Official. Okay. And then my Facebook page, and that's at MTG Music Official. So I'd say follow Facebook, and I'm on YouTube with Natalie Taylor Gray. Right. Um, but the best thing is Instagram, because I'm on there, and I can always say hi, and everyone can see kind of my news and updates. Yes, all right. That sounds good, yes. And if people want to, to buy the EP, is that available on the likes of Amazon yeah. and so on? Yes, it's on Apple Music. It's pretty much everywhere, actually. Yeah. So you'll be able to find it on all platforms. Oh, right, great. Now, are you somebody who you do like the sort of physical formats, uh, vinyl, CD, and so on? Do you like to have those at your gigs, or are you more into the download side? Do you know what? I just absolutely love vinyls and CDs, because okay. I'm a 90s kid, right. and I really yeah. think... Obviously, it's amazing that you can download today, and you yeah. can click on Spotify, and your tune comes in, but the beauty of going to a shop, which no one does anymore, to buy a CD or a vinyl. So, yes, at my gigs, I have CDs. A vinyl I haven't had, actually, but you right. know, I really want a vinyl. That will be really sick. Yeah, no, you, I don't see that. you could get a batch. So you, Sometimes people get a batch of, you know, a couple of hundred limited edition pressed up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and you can have my beautiful <laughs> signature written all over it. <laughs> yes, that's right. No, I've known people have those at gigs and so on, so yes, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm a CD girl. I think it's so cool. Come on, put your CD yes. in your car, but technology today is kind of it's getting higher and higher, isn't it? So. Yeah, well, it's interesting because a lot of artists we have on the show do still like the physical format of, of music. Yeah. So. So and I, I think of all of ages, even even those who've grown up with mainly the download format, are still sort of intrigued by vinyls, cassettes, and and CDs, really. Oh, it's lovely! Like I'm so I feel so lucky that I was a '90s baby yes. because <laughs> kids today, you know, straight away an iPhone and they're straight into this amazing technology. Whether in those days I had like MSN Messenger with a webcam, yes. there was no Instagram where you had to post pictures of yourself. Like it's it's crazy, but. In a strange way, social media is incredible because you contact people from all over the world. If I'm in Los Angeles writing, people connect with you and you yeah. work. So it's in some ways incredible. And I'm just so happy I was, I was born in a stage where I had to either, you know, call, they had to call the house phone to meet you if you yes. wanted to go to the cinema or, you know, it wasn't like just text me and, you know, kind of thing. But, that's, that's right. Yeah, it's cool, man. And you had to meet up at the time you said because there was no way to text somebody. <laughs> No, it was awful. And then when I, actually, when I first went to Sylvia Young, that's when I got my phone, because it was me ah. travelling on the tube to oh, London, yeah. and I, I'm from North London, so I had like that, you know, the 3310, where you can change the phone covers? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, it's the best phone in the world. I remember it was like the cheapest thing, and I used to play Snake. Oh, it was so good. And, like, oh, yes. <laughs> called when you were on your way home, not yeah. texting friends, really. <laughs> but, yeah. Actually, interesting that you're from London there. Uh, can you do... Uh, I'm guessing as you went to stage school, you might be able to do a few accents. Can you do a sort of a London accent? Or? Like a Cockney London? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so babe, that's me talking a bit like Cockney London. So it would be like, shut up. That's quite good. I like that. I, yeah. I know. I'm, from, I'm actually from Watford. That's oh, kind right. of where my par I grew up, actually, with my parents. Okay. Um, and then I moved around a bit when I was little. I went to Manchester. Um, but now, yeah, All Watford. Right. And then... I'm actually in Hackney now, oh, right. where I live. Because again, I sound a Cockney. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, okay, because sometimes I do go off on one and I can go Cockney. Yeah. It, does, it depends. You know, like, it's a vibe, is it? That's it, yeah. <laughs> And I love Camden. I used to live in Belfast Park in oh, right. when I was, like, 18. Yeah. Well, what we're going to ask you about Camden, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, a few towns and countries that you've gigged in all around the world. Uh, what about uh, Camden Town itself? Do you know, I haven't actually 
actually gigged in Camden. Ah, okay. I really want to, actually. Yeah. The Jazz Cafe, I'd love to. I really want to gig there. The Jazz Cafe, yes. Yeah, I really, really want to gig there. Um, I've seen a few of my mates perform there, but Camden, I actually haven't performed. You know? Right. Oh, well, you have to, you have to get uh, <laughs> get down. Well, the centre. I need to get down. I yeah, I mean, there's one or two. But, I mean, the Jazz Cafe is the obvious one, but I mean, for electro pop style, I guess you've got the Electric Ballroom. Yeah. Uh, also, Dublin Castle. I mean, it's known as a. a rock yeah, Dublin Castle sick. It's known as a rock venue, but it does have a, a wide variety of. Different sorts of music, you know, ska, electro pop, all kinds of things, yeah. really. So uh, I think that'll be good, another good one. So, yes, you shall have to. Well, when I do, you'll have to come see me. <laughs> oh, we will, yes. Well, we do like to cover artists at, at gigs and do live live link ups, interviews. Oh, yeah. When right. artists, well, sometimes just before they go on stage, sometimes after, sometimes both. So. <laughs> oh, lovely. Cool. Yeah. All right, uh, that's great. Oh, now, great. we touched on a, a little bit your influences there, Amy Winehouse, and. Yeah. Lady Gaga. Are there any other, either bands or musicians in particular that you would say are an influence? Yeah, more recently, I love Charlie Puth. Oh right. I think he's a really cool guy. Like I loved his. So, for example, my first track live, actually, his track "Attention" and his whole uh, album "Voice Note." Yeah. I actually had a lot of inspiration from because okay. I just I love bass. I love bass and guitar. Oh, nice. Um. So, Charlie Puth, Mark Bronson. Yeah. I love Mark Bronson. I'd absolutely love to work with him. Absolute genius. Um, also, Max Martin kind of vibes from the 90s. I'm, yeah. very, I'm very obsessed with him. Um, who else? Mainly, like, those guys, really. Yeah. Who I mentioned earlier. They're kind of my uh, my people. In terms of up-and-coming performances, have you got anything booked in at the moment? or? Yeah, so I've actually got my first headline show booked. It's in October, October the 14th at Pizza Express Live, actually, oh, right. in Hoban, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a, a guest girl singer who's called Adriana Blue. She's really cool. She's very jazzy. Yes. Um, but we kind of really complement each other. So that's my headline show. And oh. then my team are sorting now shows over the summer. So the best thing to do is follow me on my social media. Yes. Um, so she'll be announcing a few soon. Great. Well, we shall put the links below our show so that people can find about your up-and-coming shows. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, Thank late, you. Later in the year, yes. And as I say, certainly if you're down in Camden Town, we shall have to pop down to a show when you're in the area. Yeah, I'd absolutely love that. Great. Okay. Aww. Well, thanks very much, Natalie, for speaking to us on Camden Town Radio today. It's been great to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Now, before you go, we do have a feature that we like to do at this point of the show, which is called yeah. Favourite Ten. And yeah. it involves, in one minute, naming ten favourite things, but we prompt what the ten things are. Okay. So, you ready to go? Go on. Uh, I'm ready. Favourite book? Uh, Harry Potter. Uh, favourite film? Oh, nothing else. Favourite place to go on holiday? Italy. Favourite fruit? Oh, banana. Favourite tree? The basil comes tree. That's a herb, but no, you can have that as favourite. You can have that as favourite oh. herb. Uh, okay. We'll come back to favourite tree later on. Uh, okay. Favourite willow tree. Willow tree. Willow, willow tree. tree. Okay. Yeah. You can have that. Yes. Uh, favourite musical? Wicked. Uh, favourite terrain, countryside or town? Devon. Does that count? Uh, yes. Uh, that'll be countryside. Yes. Favourite sport? Uh, tennis. And favourite type of flower? Oh, a rose. Alright, that's great. Well, Natalie. Oh, that was so scary. I'm pleased to tell you that you did that in around 50 seconds, I think, so that was a pretty good time. I'm so good. Hello, this is Natalie Taylor Gray on Camden Town Radio. Please go and listen to my EP. You can find it on all platforms, and I really hope you enjoy it. Keep rocking! Wake up, fog on my brain. Life is feeling empty. Fall out of bed, get myself dressed, grab a cup of coffee. My life going nowhere fast. I work and count the seconds. Then at 5.01, grab my bag and run Quicker than a bullet from a gun Searching for salvation My train is in the station Waiting to leave All I have to do now is believe in me If I believe
mind stop sends me to a shrink to try to fix my mojo i tell her my fears she says they'll go away but i don't think so i try tai chi aromatherapy yoga and pilates then a bottle of wine slips down fine i think about the job and i resign don't need no redemption or divine intervention to set me Life was feeling empty. 